Mr. Speaker, let me uh, thank the gentlelady from Illinois. Uh, it's a very, very timely topic as we have seen what has transpired uh, in our nation over the past several weeks. Uh, it, it is incredible to me uh, how fast this issue has moved over the past month but it always seems that it takes a horrific act in this country for us to wake up and realize that maybe something isn't right. Nine people at church study on a Wednesday night, not knowing their fate, gunned down, in cold blood by someone who actually said, you know, they were so nice to me I almost didn't do it, but I had to. Last week in South Carolina, there was a monumental step in removing the Confederate flag for its, from its state capital where it had shamefully flown for 54 years. But here in our nation's capital last week, the Republicans tried to go back to the future. House Republicans had to pull a vote on a spending bill because some of their members opposed a measure that would ban Confederate flags from national cemeteries. And when the Democratic leader, Nancy Pelosi, presented an opportunity for Republicans to do the right thing and immediately remove the Confederate flag from the Capitol grounds, they punted. South Carolina, the birthplace of the Confederacy, had the courage to do what the House, House Republicans did not, remove that dreaded symbol. It is a symbol of incomprehensible hate, a hate that manifested itself in a massacre. Since that unfortunate day, one month ago, we as a nation have been forced to look inward at who we are and who we want to be. Out of this immense grief of that dark day in Charleston, came a resounding call throughout our, nation's, throughout our nation to remove the Confederate flag and other symbols of racism and racial supremacy. For many, the removal of these symbols is a, is a logical step in the trajectory of our nation, a necessary action on the path towards a more perfect union. For others, calls to remove these symbols of hate are seen as attacks on the Southern identity, heritage, and culture. But arguing that the Confederate flag is a symbol of Southern pride celebrates a single homogeneous culture. It means listening to only some voices at the expense of others. It means ignoring the African American experience throughout our nation's history. From the dark period of slavery to the civil rights movement, to the present day. According to a report by the Equal Justice Initiative, 3,959 African Americans in 12 states were killed by the terror of lynching between 1877 and 1950. 3,900 and 59 Americans lynched. If we are going to refer to the past in debate over the Confederate flag, certainly we need to take all of this into account. The, con the Confederate flag has always stood for racial supremacy and bigotry. And if we are to realize our nation's promise of justice and full equality, we cannot embrace this symbol. Eradicating symbols of hatred, violence, cruel oppression, steeped in the racism is a critical step 
to confronting prejudice in our society. Now, we have all heard complaints that this debate does not matter, that removing Confederate flags and other symbols of hatred is a distraction from the larger problem facing our nation, such as rampant gun violence. I agree that significantly more must be done to address racism and persist, persistent inequality in our nation. I agree that we need meaningful gun reform, from expanding background checks to reducing unchecked online ammunition purchases. I agree that we need to create jobs, reduce wealth disparities, and expand educational opportunities. But symbols matter. Symbols legitimize public opinion, and in doing so, entrench attitudes and beliefs. At the same time, they create a meaning, shape actions, and connect us to one another. And just as a symbol can connect us, they can tear us apart. And Mr. Speaker, as I go to my seat, as I was talking to my staff the other day about this and how much we were happy to see that flag lowered, the symbol is gone, but the sentiment remains. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back.